In Antarctica's unpredictable waters, a slight wind change can fast bring in pack ice. On this dense flow, we encounter some of the continent's inhabitants. While some are startled, others seem unimpressed. But as evening falls, there's a change in the ice, and a long, deep ocean swell arrives beneath it. The weather in the last few hours has just turned rotten, started snowing, and the swell has come up from the east. We've been riding into it, huge bow waves and rise, and every time we come down, there's an enormous crunch as we pulverize the ice below us. It's really something incredibly dynamic and energetic. The next day, the sea is free of ice, and the ship continues east. We're visited along the way by a pair of humpback whales, a common species in these waters. And to get a better understanding of what marine life there is in the ocean and on its floor, nets and a dredge are dropped. The nets return a rich catch of krill, a favourite of whales, and other juvenile fish. The dredge of the ocean bottom reveals some extraordinary creatures. Of particular interest are those with shells. The carbon that's in their shells originates, of course, from the atmosphere. That gets absorbed by the very small plants that are in the water, the algae, and that in turn rains down on the seafloor and is eaten by the clams, the corals, and other creatures with hard shells. And it seems that in a lot of places, that carbon is then buried, which means it's taken out of the carbon cycle. Research in other parts of Antarctica suggests the removal of carbon from the atmosphere in this way has been underestimated. And as carbon dioxide levels in the air continue to rise as a result of burning fossil fuels, the process needs to be better understood and incorporated in climate change models. In the lab, the creatures are photographed and their details recorded. The sea mouse is a notable catch, so too this brittle star. Later, their DNA will be analysed in an effort to understand how populations of organisms like these have been able to survive previous changes to the climate, which once saw the entire Antarctic continent, including its shelf, covered with ice year-round. We're collecting animals from these sub-Antarctic islands, um, and we will extract and sequence their DNA, and this will provide a window into whether or not these islands provided refugia for the animals that live on Antarctica today. So this is where they take, re took refuge during these glacial periods and then um, recolonised the shelf. It's summer here, but the next night it snows heavily. The ship continues east towards the Ross Sea, where more samples will be taken and the scientific expedition will continue. Tarek Basley, Al Jazeera, off East Antarctica.